I found Rainer Rubenlinger back with another question that is often asked in my corporate Python training courses. And the question is as follows. What's the difference between multiple if statements and if, elif, 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 and else? So let me demonstrate to you these two things and let's talk about how they're similar and how they're different. So let's say I say x equals 100 and y equals 200. So I can, of course, check the values of one or both of these. I can say if x equals equals 100, print yes, x is 100. And I can say if x equals equals, let's say y equals equals 200, and print yes, y is 200. You can tell that we're very excited about this because we have exclamation points there. And of course, if is the way that we check for a condition being true in Python. The way it works is that the if keyword here, and if looks to its right, and it says, hey, do I have a true value or a false value to my right? Those are the only two possibilities. It's either true or false. So in this case, if looks to its right, and it gets the value returned from the comparison here, x equals equals 100. So if x is 100, we'll get a true value. If x is not 100, we'll get a false value. End of story. So, of course, if f, if, if, if sees a true value to its right, then it executes the block that is here. All right, now the block in this case is only one line long. So I can say here, if x is 100, then print this is x is 100. I can say else, print, sorry, x is not 100. Maybe I'm not really sorry, but I'll be polite. And I can say else, print, sorry, y is not 200. And if I run this code, we can see that it says x is 100, and it also says x is 200. Let's think about why this is happening, or x this is happening. Oh, I'm full of dumb jokes today. In any event, I can define x to be 100 and y to be 200. Remember, we're going to execute the code line by line. Now, when we get to an if-else statement, if-else means that one of these and only one of these will run, not fewer and not more. So this gives us a choice. The if looks to its right and says, is this true? If it's true, then this line will run. Runs if x, you know, if the if statement gets a true value. Whereas this runs if the if statement gets a false value. And the same is true here, right? This runs if the if statement gets a true value. And here you can see it says runs if the if, if statement gets a false value. Now this works just fine, and we're just going to go through one by one by one. And again, the if and else are mutually exclusive, and this is going to play into what I'm talking about right here. So why would we have a conditional in our program? Because that's what makes programs interesting. That's what allows them to do different things. If statements are at the heart of everything we do in programming. Just here, I'm, I'm moving my mouse cursor around the screen. So right now, it's this I-beam sort of cursor. But if I move it up toward a menu, we get the hand. And if I move it down a little bit, we get the arrow. So how is it changing? Because of an if statement, right? Somewhere in my computer system, somewhere in my browser, it's saying, if the cursor position is over this, then do that. If the cursor, per, cursor position is over that, then do something else. We're constantly, constantly checking things. And the fact is, that's how our computers can actually do stuff. When I type something, I want different commands to give me different results. When I click on something, I want different clicks to give me different results. And so the if statement is, of course, central to that. So if else, one of these is going to run. And the fact that I have two if else statements here means that one of these two is going to run and one of these two is going to run. Let's copy this and change things a little bit. What if I say now y is 400? Well, once again, in each if else, one of these is going to run. So it's either this print or that print and either this print or that print. And this time we see that yes, x is 100 is running. But we also see that sorry, y is not 200 is running. Why is that? Because, well, y is not 200. So if you have multiple if statements, if and then another if and another if and another if, each of those independently can run. And if, if else, if else, if else, each of those little if else blocks independently can run. There's no connection whatsoever between this if else and this if else, even if I'm checking the same variable. So watch what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get rid of y altogether. And I'm going to say if x equals equals 200. Right? So now I'm doing two totally different checks on x. I'm saying is x 100? Maybe yes, maybe no. Is x 200? Maybe yes, maybe no. And of course it's going to say, well, maybe I should change the text here. Right? So it's going to say x is 100, x is not 200. 
What if I change this a little bit more? What if I say here, if x is greater than 10, and here I say, let's say x is greater than 10. Just make it a little better there. And then sorry, x is not greater than 10. All right, and now here I'm gonna say if x is greater than 20. See where I'm going with this maybe? Maybe. I'm just gonna get rid of comments so I don't say, say it as much. It's not greater than 20. So what's gonna happen? Well, once again, each of these if else's is gonna run independently of the other. So first we're gonna check, is x greater than 10? Yes, it is. Is x greater than 20? Yes, it is. Both of these are true. We are checking them both on x, and both are true. Here, this is not really There we go. So you can see that now this can fire and this can fire. And if I get rid of the else's, let's just do this here. If I get rid of the else's, then we can have one print or both prints. Once again, and it's totally fine because we might be checking different things. Okay, now to the core of our question. People often ask me, and people often get this mixed up a little bit, especially if they're new to programming. What if I say here, not if and if, but if I say if and else, and I can say else, I'll print something else entirely. Well, now the logic is a little different. Now what happens is, once again, if looks to its right. Does it have a true value? If it does have a true value, that's it. It does not check this else, and it does not check this else. That's because, as before, with the if and the else, one of them, and only one of them, will fire. They're mutually exclusive. So we are guaranteed that one of these three things will be printed, but we are also guaranteed that not more than one of them will be printed. This means that if x is greater than 10, great, x is greater than 10 will be printed, and this elif will be ignored completely. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? The answer is it always depends. It depends on your program, what you want to do, and what sorts of decisions you're trying to make. If you're trying to find, first is it greater than 10, and then is it greater than 20? Well, actually, like this is a pretty silly thing to put in your program because it's never gonna fire. I mean, I guess actually it will fire there if it's, well, no, it's never gonna fire. It's never gonna fire because anything that's greater than 10 is also greater than 20. Right now, if we were to reverse them, then we would be able to find things that would only sometimes be true, right? Sometimes be true for the person. So if I say here, this is greater than 20, I can say here, else this is greater than 10. And now you can imagine if x is 15, they'll say yes, x is greater than 10. But if I say x is 150, now it's going to say x is greater than 20. So if you are going to use if, elif, and else, you need to realize a few things. First of all, that they're mutually exclusive. Second of all, that one of them and only one of them will fire. So third of all, that Python checks them in order. Is this true? Oh, if not, then and only then will we check the next one. Is this true? If not, then and only then will we go on to the next one. And the else is like a catch-all. Else is basically, well, nothing else before me was true, so I will fire. So this is very different from having multiple if statements, because multiple if statements, more than one can fire, as we saw above. So if is great, if else is great, if elif else is great, all of these are great, but you just need to realize um, what's going to happen and what the logic is behind them. I'm just going to show one more thing, which is, of course, that we can have as many elif clauses as we want. I'm going to say print yes and print five. And this is a pretty standard way to sort of sift through things and check things if we want. And, you know, first one checks, second one checks, third one checks. Each one is getting more and more sort of specific and restrictive um, so that we know that it, you know, it, it wasn't caught by one of the earlier ones. Um, one last little point here, and I'll let you go. Um, if and elif must, must, must have conditions, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Because if looks to its right for a true or false value, elif looks to its right for a true or false value. Else, though, does not look to its right. Else is just a catch-all. It will always fire if we get there. And I see a lot of people make the mistake of either forgetting to put a condition in elif or putting a condition in else. Neither will work. Python will give you a syntax error. Okay, I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, comments, thoughts, please contact me via email on Twitter or right here in the comments. Subscribe for more videos like this explaining Python, and I'll be back soon with another video going through different questions that I got from my Python students. See you soon.